Hi, as promised, this is a video that will tackle the transfer of thermal energy questions in section B. So hope that they will be helpful for you. All the best. In the previous video, we talked about kinetic model of matter and we went through uh, some questions. Today, we want to move on to transfer of thermal energy. This topic is kind of related to kinetic model as well and, and you will see that later on. So let me quickly just do an overview of the ways that thermal energy get transferred. So there are three main ways, conduction, convection and radiation. So let me just go through how does each happen, where does it happen and the factors that, that determines the rate of conduction, convection or radiation. So firstly conduction. So in simple terms, conduction is the transfer of thermal energy through a medium. So in order for conduction to take place, you need to have a medium. This medium can be solid, liquid or gas. Of course, later you will learn that the effectiveness of each may be different. So how does it happen? It's through the vibration of the particles. So a simple illustration is like all of them are in a chain. So when one vibrate, the next vibrate and go on the text next one vibrates okay so it goes across like this so in order for conduction to take place there has to be a medium there has to be a contact so if there is vacuum means that there is no medium conduction cannot take place next convection is the transfer of heat through the movement of the medium so in order for conduction to take convection to take place i beg your pardon the medium need to be able to move or able to flow so how is it able to flow is by density changes of the, in this case, the medium will most likely be a fluid or a gas. And lastly, radiation is the transfer of heat without a medium. So what makes it, so you see that the main uh, concept that's going across is medium. This is going through. This is by the medium moving. This is without a medium. Then how does it transfer? Is through electromagnetic waves. So the particular electromagnetic waves that's involved in radiation, actually it is some range of visible light, some range of UV rays and infrared radiation. Right? So where does it take place? For conduction to take place, Conduction can take place in solids, liquids, and gas. However, for liquids and gas, it's much less effective, primarily because of weaker intermolecular bonds for liquids. So the heat transfer by passing on vibrations is not as effective. So it's like a negative thing. For gas, it can take place at the same time it's not effective because the particles in gas are very spaced apart as we learn over here they are very further apart so when one gas particles get higher energy from the thermal source it moves faster it will it will take a longer time for it to collide with another particle and it's moving in all different directions so for conduction to take place in liquids and gas is not as effective and for convection it can only take place in liquids and gas so convection cannot take place in solids because the medium they are locked in place remember so they are in their fixed position they can't move but for liquids and gas the particles are freer to move around so convection can take place so it will always move from downwards to upwards okay, in circular ways so this is where it happens radiation it happens everywhere as long as there's a heat source radiation can happen and that explains why heat energy can reach the earth from the sun even when there is space which is vacuum in between so conduction cannot take place in space convection cannot take place in space because there's no liquid and gas but but we can still experience the heat energy from the sun and that's mainly through radiation okay so now come to the more important part which is the factors 
So conduction happened mainly in solids, which is the most effective. But what makes certain solids better conductors of heat than others is the presence of free electrons. So where, what are the materials that have free electrons is, are your metals. So when metals have free electrons, it makes them better conductors of heat. So conduction actually improves. So it means that your non-metals are relatively worse off conductors of heat. So then we also call them insulators. So conduction can take place in insulators but at a much slower rate. At the same time, liquids and gas are also classified insulators because while conduction can take place, it is not as effective. So the main tool we use if we want heat to be conducted effectively is we use metals. Why? Because they have free electrons. What does the free electrons do? Because the free electrons are not bounded in a particular location. So it is not like one vibrate, the ring can vibrate, and then goes on. The free electrons are free to move around. So that makes uh, that helps in the passing on of energy, passing on of vibration through the solid itself. Next, for convection to take place, the factor is uh, because of the density. The reason why the fluid moves is because the density changes. So the part of the fluid that is near to the heat source will receive heat first via conduction. And because as it receives heat, it will move faster. As it moves faster, it gains kinetic energy. It will move towards a larger space and expansion will take place. Once expansion takes place, volume will increase, but the mass remains the same, and that leads to a reduction in density. That's why the heated fluid or gas will float upwards, and there will be a space. Then the cooler fluid or gas will come downwards to reach the heat source again, where heat is passed on through conduction again, and then this process goes on. So the factors of heat effectively heating through a fluid or, or gas by convection is the location of your heat source. So let's say if I put my heat source somewhere at the side over here, and this is my fluid, then effectively I can only heat this amount of liquid. This liquid over here will be harder for me to heat up. And that explains why when you go to the sea, Although the sand is, is very hot and the, the sea itself is very cold even though both the liquid and the solid is being exposed to the same sun throughout the day and receive heat via radiation. Because heat transfer from the top to the bottom of the fluid is not effective at all through convection. So that's why the water becomes cold once you step in. And once the surface of the water gets heated up, the water actually evaporates. So energy will keep going, moving upwards instead. Okay, so it doesn't reach the bottom of the lake. So that's why under the bottom, the, the further down you go down the sea, the colder it gets. Factors affecting radiation, this is important. Okay, your shiny and smooth surfaces, these are your reflectors of radiation. Means that they are either bad they are both bad emitters of radiation and bad absorbers of radiation. So dark and rough are your good emitters, means they will give out more heat via radiation. They also absorb more heat via radiation. So it really depends on what is the relative heat. So if it's a hot day, you wear a black t-shirt out, you are going to receive more heat via radiation, you're going to feel warmer. But if it's a cold day, you wear a black t-shirt out and you are colder than the temperature that's outside. Your black t-shirt will help you emit more heat outwards and you will actually feel colder. So it is actually better to wear a white color, a shiny color, winter clothes. It will help to keep the heat inside. So this is an overview of the three types of
thermal energy transfer. Let's now look at all the questions and see how we apply all these concepts. First question from 2017. So we have the contacts over here. You have two cans, radiant heater. Inside the can, there is wax. They are placed equal distance. So they say they have the same mass of the same shape and size. Can A is painted silver and can B is painted dull black. So normally when you see silver and dull black, you know that the question is pointing towards radiation because of this factor over here. When the heater is switched on, thermal energy from the heater reaches the solid wax in the cans by means of radiation through the air and by conduction, conduction through the walls of the cans. So two questions, describe how the thermal energy passes through the walls of the can, explain why thermal energy cannot be conducted effectively through the air between the radiant heater and the cans. So this question primarily is asking if you understand the concept of conduction. Let's tackle the first question, describe how the thermal energy passes through the walls of the can. So going through the walls of the can, it says that it is via conduction. When it's by conduction, we need to look at the medium. That means what is the material. Because different materials will play a factor in the rate of conduction. So in this case, it says that the cans are made of copper. So copper is one of the main points. Copper is a metal. Metal has three electrons. So other than describing the process of conduction, later we also need to state the fact of the role of uh, these free electrons, what is the role that they play. So let's describe the transfer of thermal energy. So the way I'm going to frame the story is that heat will come to the surface and then you will heat the first particle here and then it will vibrate to reach the particle at the other side of the wall. So as the thermal energy reaches the surface of the wall, particles near to the surface will receive the energy and start to vibrate faster. The vibration will be passed down sequentially to the neighboring particles causing energy to be transferred. So here essentially I've described uh, the process of conduction already. So now I'm going to talk about the free electrons. The free electrons so I want to use the context of copper in the copper also help to accelerate the transfer of energy through their collisions with the particles. Okay, so that's how we score our two marks. Part two. Explain why thermal energy cannot be conducted effectively through the air between the radiant heater and the cans. So they want you to explain why is air an insulator of heat. Means that conduction, although it can happen, is not effective. So the reason, again, is because we go back to our kinetic theory of matter, because particles in gas, they are further apart. So you can see that everything is linked. As the particles in air are further apart, transfer of thermal energy through... So in this case, in air, they are not really vibrating. Through collisions will be less effective as the air particles are moving in different directions. So there are two parts to it. First is they are further apart so they need to transfer by collision. So it's not so effective because they are moving in all different directions. We cannot just force the transfer energy that's going 
one way. So if it goes in all different directions, you can see that the energy is also being diffused all over the place. So it's one mark. So I think the main mark that's given is this part, yeah, further apart. So that is 2017 paper. Let's go to the next one. The next question is from 2019. So it's part of this question 13. The question started off with electricity about uh, the context is an electric kettle. So all this is electricity. Then it comes down to the second part, which asks you to describe how thermal energy is transferred from the hot surface of the kettle to the surrounding air. So let's say, let's have a kettle. So this is hot. So how does energy go from the surface to the air? And then part B, they are often made of shiny silver colored metal. Discuss how this material affects the rate at which energy is transferred from the kettle. So once you see silver color, you know that they want to talk about radiation. So it's pretty clear. So it's often good for you to read through all the parts of the question before you start answering. First part, so thermal energy is transferred, pardon, is transferred from the surface of the kettle to the surrounding air by, so the first thing I want to write is radiation. So this is one point, but there is two marks here. I don't think just by writing radiation, I'm going to get everything. There is another way that heat is being transferred. So let's say it's the wall of the kettle. So heat is here. So we have, let's say we have air particle here and then we have air particle here. So how does heat move from air particle A to B. So we have to maybe describe this part and then we describe this part. Energy also transfer to the surrounding air in contact. So the keyword is contact with the surface of the kettle through conduction. Energy and then be circulated to the surrounding air through convection when the air when the density of the air particle changes so it's a bit uh, overload but I mean I just want to write a little bit more so here keyword the part that's in contact I use conduction first and then from A to B, we use convection. So in a sense, this question inside, we introduce radiation, conduction, and convection, all three. Because they didn't talk about how thermal energy is mostly transferred to everything. So we just want to write everything. Okay, next part of the question. How this material affects the rate at which energy is transferred from the kettle? So context, concept, conclusion. Shiny surfaces are bad emitters of radiation. What is this? This is concept. When the kettles are made of shiny silver colored metal, so this is context, this will reduce the amount of heat loss due to radiation. So that's how you get two marks. So first you write a concept first and after that apply the concept to the context. So that is 2019 question. Let's look at the next one. This next one is a 2016 paper question. So the context is a freezer. The walls and doors of the freezer are filled with solid insulating material. The insulator reduces but does not prevent the transfer of thermal energy through the walls. Describe and explain how heat energy can be transferred through the insulating material, but only at a slow rate. So they want you to describe the process of conduction and they also want you to describe what makes certain solid uh, better insulators than the rest. So there's two parts to the question. A. Thermal energy transfers through a solid by conduction as the particles gain kinetic energy and vibrate faster. The vibration passes through 
the other particles allowing them to gain kinetic energy so we explain uh, conduction over here however if the material is a non-metal so here we are targeting on insulators non-metals the absence of free electrons will slow down the rate of conduction we want to let them know that we understand the role that free electrons play so instead of saying that there's free electrons present we say that it's absence some materials such as foam also contains air pockets which will slow down conduction as air particles are further apart from each other so i know it's it's quite a lot but i think you can fit in here they have given one two three four five six seven eight lines so mainly three marks we want to kind of feel as much as you can i think it's if i'm a bit wordy you can concise it a bit further so mainly the first part we explain conduction then we introduce the concept of non-metal which highlight the fact that free electrons are absent and indirectly you are also showing them that you know the role of free electrons this point is a is like a, a bonus because a lot of insulating solid materials such as foam has air pockets so these air pockets will slow down conduction because air particles are further apart from each other so this one should get you three or, or even <laughs> four marks okay thank you for staying through the whole video i hope that that is good for you and useful for your coming o levels so do like the video and subscribe to our channel